Hey, hi, hello, what's up, how's it going? It's Dave the Phantom, and today I am back at it again with another video. This time, we're still on sustainability, but we're talking about something a little bit more near and dear to our hearts, cosplay. Today we're gonna be talking about con crunching, cosplay creation, and how you can be a little bit more sustainable whenever you're crafting your cosplays. So without further ado, let's get to it. So many of us already know what con crunching is, but those of you who are just joining us during the pandemic or who are still new to the cosplay scene in general don't quite know what it is yet. Con crunching is basically where cosplayers make their cosplays as quickly as possible in the short period of time before conventions. This often leads to a lot of costumes that are flimsily made, not entirely finished, or even hot glued together. People can con crunch up to a month before the convention or down to the wire at the convention center in their hotel room, which happens a lot more often than you would think. Con crunching is bad for a litany of reasons. Lack of sleep, fast paced work, inconsistent eating habits, and the overall stress of making that cosplay in such a short period of time can lead to either illness or just plain hurting yourself. It's not good for your health or your craft when you con crunch. Is that gonna stop any of us? No. Do we need to be more conscious of it? Absolutely. Not only does con crunching really affect your health, but it's also really wasteful of materials. From the expensive pleathers and synthetic knits that we use for the, our more extravagant cosplays, being damaged beyond belief, to actually using hot glue on these fabrics and making them unusable in the future. Hot glue being used on fabric is also not good for it and can fall apart really, really quickly. So whenever you hot glue a cosplay together just before a con, it ends up being nearly unusable the following convention. So you end up having to remake it anyways. We buy wigs that are patchy and terrible because it at least does its job and it functions, but at the end of the day, we're likely only going to wear it that one time and then throw it away because it's not even good enough to sell again. Cosplayers will often make cosplays just to wear the one time and never wear again, just to be one of the people who gets to say that they cosplayed it first. These cosplays are often slapped together a week before the con, and they're made in such a way that they're essentially just presentable. Really, really honing in on that five foot rule. If it looks good at five feet away, it's fine and it's good enough. Either that, or they end up going through the entire process of making it super quickly and making it poorly and then having to go back entirely scrap it and remake it because the fabric that they use is entirely unusable because it was either poorly sourced or it was just damaged while you were making it or wearing it at the convention. And trust me, I've done the same thing. I'm not blaming anyone for doing this sort of thing. Take my level 10 adjuster for instance. The Critical Role level 10 designs came out a month before Anime Week in Atlanta. And me being me and me being a little bit too extra decided, oh, this would be perfect to bring to the con. So during that month before the con, I was on crunch time. I had to make two dresses and an underskirt, plus the entirely quilted jacket, plus trims and buttons and horns and all of these different things that just created a huge problem for me. The pattern I commissioned for her jacket ended up coming in only a few days before the con, meaning I had three days to entirely make her jacket and to quilt it and everything. And I did it, but her jacket had no closures, the trim wasn't properly sewn on, and I had to buy horns at the convention that I was at because I didn't have her horns done in time. And I don't blame the person who made the pattern for her. That was entirely on me. I decided to do this last minute and I couldn't figure out how to pattern out the jacket in time. But I was still sewing at the convention, staying up until two, three in the morning, hand sewing down the trim to the jacket for my shoot the next morning. The jacket was safety pin shut and I was extremely unhappy with how it turned out. It was still salvageable though. I made it in such a way that I had enough wiggle room to still fix it up after the convention was over. And that's what you saw at KatsuCon 2020 was my actually finished version of my Jester Lavore cosplay. I've also been known to make last minute cosplays, which I fully understand the appeal of doing that. But the goal is to give yourself at least a month minimum. In certain instances, I've given myself less than that, but it's usually super simple things that I know I can make in less than a week. Take for instance, my assless chaps Johnny Joe star that I did with Hailfire Cosplay and my glam wrestling Mountain Tim that I did with Hailfire Cosplay. But they were simplistic cosplays that didn't take a whole lot of the effort, energy, or fabric. So it was something that I felt I could make super quickly and then move on from there. Which brings me to another good point. Keep your scrap fabrics. 
I cannot even begin to tell you how many last minute cosplays I have been able to create because I had scrap fabric lying around. Take for instance my bunny suit Dunkin Donuts. I did the bunny suit Dunkin for a fast food bunny suit group at Katsu Con 2020, rip in pieces cons, but I did that with a few of my friends and while that cosplay was still super last minute, I only gave myself about a month and a half to make it. I used leftover scrap material from my Nana Shimura cape in order to make most of the bunny suit. I literally had to Tetris my way around my Nana Shimura scraps in order to get all of the pieces I needed, but for a bunny suit, you need less than a yard to make it. At least for me, I needed less than a yard to make it. For my bunny suit Dunkin' Donuts look, I also had enough scrap fabric to make a test bandana for my Miss Joke cosplay. Leftover fabric from Blue Diamond gave me enough to make different parts of Jester Lavore. And the scrap material from my Holiday Giorno, which I'm still working on, was actually used for my bunny suit Doma that I also did at KatsuCon. So when I say keep your scrap fabric, keep your scrap fabric. You could use it for a small detail, you could find something to make with it, but for the most part, you'd be surprised at how little fabric you need for certain things and what you would realize you would need months down the road with something small for a project. Keeping your scrap fabric and having that little stash allows for a little bit of a safety net whenever you're making your cosplays. And it oftentimes saves money because you don't always need to buy brand new fabric every time you go out. Speaking of brand new fabric, a lot of the fabric that I use for my fancier cosplays, I've actually found at thrift stores. I have used so many old curtains to make cosplays. Take for instance my Taco from the Adventure Zone. His cape that I used was made out of old curtains and his vest was also old curtains. My Holiday Giorno and my B D Bunny Suit Doma are made out of old curtains. But they're taffetas, dupiani silks, jacquards, brocades. There are all of these fabrics that you can find made into curtains at Goodwill that you can find for extremely cheap, and there's almost always enough to make a rather large cosplay out of it. Not to mention, I have found an 11 yard roll of color shift taffeta at Goodwill for $10. 11 yards. So there are really good finds at thrift stores. So when you're thinking of making a cosplay, try thrifting it. Thrifting has always been a huge part of cosplay. It's a big part of closet cosplaying and it's also a good way for you to save money and save time when making certain cosplays. My Duck Newton was almost entirely thrifted. The jacket, pants, and shoes were all pieces I had thrifted in the past. And the wig I had was from a character I did forever ago. And it's a wig I mostly use for drag. And for Tony, the jacket, shirt, pants, and shoes were thrifted years ago. I also thrift a lot of my shoes. Like, a, a lot of my shoes. I did the clothing inventory on my Instagram, and I am ashamed at how many shoes I own, but also, they are for the most part thrifted. You can also use a lot of the same pieces in multiple cosplays. If you can find a character with similar styles, you can generally just use the same pieces. Black bodysuits are your best friend. My Raven bodysuit has been used in so many different cosplays, and when I finally retired Raven out of my lineup, I cut off the sleeves and that's what I use for Chompette. Actually, the entirety of Chompette is Frankenstein from other cosplays. Chompette was a last minute cosplay I threw together at Seishun Con to join in my friend's cosplay group. It was made of entirely things from my suitcase, plus the chains and crown from Crystal Prism cosplay. My wig was my old Metaton wig that I was using for Nana Shimura for the first time that weekend. The bodysuit was my Raven bodysuit that I was using for a sexy Rave James cosplay. The tights were my Geary Geary tights that I was also using for James. The skirt was my Nana Shimura skirt, safety pinned on me. And the boots were a thrifted pair of boots that I have used in at least 30 other cosplays. All of Chompette was a closet cosplay and she is one of my absolute favorite characters to cosplay. I don't know how I did it, I just, I managed. <laughs> My loop cosplay has an old skirt that I've had for a few years already, and then my CL Phantom Hive shirt with a belt from an old sweater dress that I don't even own anymore. If you have a bunch of basic pieces for cosplay, you can oftentimes use a lot of what you already have in order to make these characters and these cosplays. Having those basic, like, generic pieces really help with a lot of different characters. A plain black bodysuit can take you so far. 
and a white button down is everything you need for like 20,000 characters. When it comes to cosplay, you don't have to buy it off the bat. You don't even have to make it. A lot of the time, you don't even have to piecemeal it together by thrifting. You can always just buy it secondhand. Sites like Depop and eBay, and even more recently, Lumika, have hundreds and hundreds of pre-owned cosplays that are still relatively affordable. A lot of the time, they're hardly even worn, and people are just wanting to get them out of their closets. Those affordable secondhand prices also allow for you to be able to do more with those cosplays, and you can often find really, really nice pieces that you don't really find anywhere else. Lumika especially is a brand new site that's dedicated to secondhand cosplay sale. So it's anything from wigs to props to full-blown cosplays that you can get for relatively affordable prices. You you still have to be careful about who you buy from, and you still have to be generally cautious of what you're getting, as is the problem with a lot of resale places. But it's usually a lot more affordable and actually better for the environment than buying from these fast-paced, technically fast fashion cosplay websites. And if the cosplay is well enough maintained and it's reached the end of its life in your lineup, you can always go back and turn around and resell it again. Maintenance is still very, very key when it comes to cosplay though. Like I said, a lot of these cosplays on the secondhand sites are well maintained. It's always best to hand wash your cosplays as a lot of the time the details are a little bit more delicate on them. And because of how much you sweat in them, you want to wash them every single time you wear them. It's always best to make your cosplay place right the first time around and mend them when you can, as opposed to just scrapping it as soon as something goes wrong with it. Don't worry about being the first to cosplay something or cosplay something while it's at its peak. Cosplay because it's fun and you enjoy the character. You don't have to have a character fully put together in the first week of it existing. There are a lot of ways to make cosplay work for you, especially when it comes to making them. Having those few basic pieces are really, really nice to build off of whenever you're wanting to make more cosplays or cosplay more characters. Thrifting clothing and altering them to fit what you need often leads for a more natural looking cosplay. And not to mention thrifting fabrics can allow you to find really, really nice, expensive fabrics for really cheap prices. Cosplay is meant to be fun. It's a hobby. Just because somebody else buys cosplays, makes cosplays, or cranks them out in the week, doesn't mean that you have to as well. Some people do this as a job, so it's actually in their best interest to make these things quickly. But a lot of the time, you don't have the same luxury of time as people who do cosplay as a job. So don't compare yourself to these big name cosplayers whose only job it is to cosplay. Be conscious of what you're producing, but also have fun with what you're doing. Cosplay is literally just dress up. Have fun, be silly, and be safe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't hesitate to leave a like down below. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. And if you wanna see more content like this, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more videos in this next year, and I'm hoping to do a lot more fun things like this and have more conversations with you guys about cosplay. Also, don't forget to check out my other social media at The Fantoom on TikTok and Instagram and at The Fantoom Cause on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I really do hope Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful week, wonderful year, and I will catch you in the next video. Um, bye! Take for instance my assless chaps Johnny Joestar that I did with Hailfire Cosplay at MomoCon? MomoCon? <laughs>